Future Proof is sponsored by Equipping Young Adults for Life, Inspiring Student Resilience, Championing Hope. and welcome back from the break. Thank you so much for joining me, Sarah Hopwood, as I have Amanda Starkey, I only said Starkey, um, and Debbie Stevens um, in the studio, and both of them immersed in education for different reasons. And uh, just going into the break, Debbie was talking about reflexology and um, the Egyptians, and I know she wants to say a little bit more about it, but I have to say, whilst um, you were just watching the adverts there, Amanda was talking about her experience experience in Gujarat and I'd really like to pick up on that Amanda if that's okay because it does tie up with the artificial intelligence conversation. Can you tell us what happened? You were over there as a consultant were you? Yes so I was part I was working for a charity a teacher training um, charity and I had been part of the team that helped write um, training for teachers um, so I was I knew what was being said but it was being delivered in Gujarati, mm. which is a language I don't speak at all. Mm. <laughs> but because I knew what was being said, you knew how well it was going. So at the end of each session, I could still feed back, I could still give kind of feedback to how well it went. I still understood that went well. Mm. And that was all about my emotional connection to what was going on. So I think the reason why that triggered a, a thought process for you is in your head when Debbie was speaking, you were thinking a robot couldn't do that. It couldn't. It couldn't. It, I was picking up the emotional atmosphere in the room. Yeah, so it There's, wasn't face recognition. No, it wasn't not at all. word recognition. No. It was the, the invisible atmosphere. It was an engagement atmosphere. Were those amazing people engaged did they understand what was going on were they um, positively um, enjoying and kind of getting something from what was mm. being said or were they completely like I don't know what's going on it's mm. too far above what we what we know we've experienced and that's what you could gauge that engagement in what was going on. Do you know what's come to mind there is the word charisma you know, charisma, with the, some people can be uh, charismatic and others not, what have you. Yes. But that is not something that you hear or see, I would suggest to you. No. It's something that you feel yeah. that is purely an atmospheric change, atmospheric change. Yes. But Debbie, you wanted to say about why, why you want to help educate. Can you just say a bit more about... I think um, we all paint this amazing picture of how well the world wants to see us don't we, you know, we dress in a certain way, we put our lipstick on, or you know, whatever. We, we paint this beautiful picture of our emotional state. But actually, when you look behind that, and when, you, when you're in a, a holistic therapies and you feel and touch, you can actually feel the quake underneath. You can feel all the cracks, you can feel where the tension is, you know, there's all those things going on. And, and then when you start peeling all of those layers back, you can actually work with their mental health. You can feel, you know, you can adjust your treatment accordingly. You know, I, I have people coming to me and they look forward to coming to see me because I'm going to help them. And when they leave me, I will be giving them homework to adjust their own mental health. I'll be giving them a strategy to be able to empower them to look after themselves a bit. You know. What I love is, is, and I've said it before, by the age of seven almost, we've all become experts at showing the world what we want the world to see. Okay. Um, but also, let's have an argument for artificial intelligence, which I think the workplace is already listening to, is a robot won't take offence, won't go off sick, won't have holiday, won't have the hump, um, won't have um, a variance in um, a delivery from day to day. Uh, you know, how do you think we can in a very nice way communicate this because we do know there are some people that want everything but don't want to do the work for it we do we have we see it across the board not just in adults we can see in education so how can we address the presence of artificial intelligence and not say oh it's all bad and horrible but try and also encourage people to be the best that they can be without pushing them into fear 
I think we've got to learn from the young people. Now, I've reached an age where I realise what I'm good at, but I'm not as good at IT and understanding that as, as my niece who's 22. But if even in education, if I can learn from the seven, eight-year-olds and their world is much more to do with IT and they understand artificial intelligence much more than I do, if you can get that two-way understanding, then we're learning both ways to its advantage as well as... I think so. And if you can... if you that everything has a place, doesn't it? So if you were going into a class where you said to the students, we're not going to have any emotional ta attachment to this project, and these are the questions that we need to be that need to be answered. I think in life everybody will be able to, you know, to move forward because sometimes I could be emotionally attached to a project that could stop me from moving forward. Oh, definitely. So if I could, so every now and again I say, just remove the attack, remove the emotion, Debbie. What would you be doing if there was no emotional attachment to this? Of course, I would move forward and, and do that. So there is a place for it. It's just we have to accept where it is. What I've That's always it. said, and we talk about the law, law of attachment, law of attraction, or you know, and, and and I agree that actually we need to exercise the law of is it dis disattachment, unattachment, because that gives us more freedom. And then once we've made key decisions, have you then bring back in the emotion to use that more of a litmus test, um, perhaps intuition, whatever it is, to then just double check that it feels if we go back to energy in the room yeah um uh okay so you know yeah, cool. hierarchy yes. of need. so if you're starting you, yeah hierarchy of needs yeah. is basically a pyramid food air and water that yes. goes right up to fulfillment doesn't yes. it and there are stages so it, you need the bottom layer yeah. of, of food shelter water yeah and then the next layer is about that feeling connected respected yes. trusted that emotional connection and then you can put learning in Yes. above that so it's almost like we need that emotional connection we need that acceptance that understanding that we connect with each other yeah. and then we can do the learning so the artificial I intelligence could come above that but yeah. not instead of I think that's that can you just say that again you, I love that the artificial intelligence can come above the food shelter water the learning and attachment and then come above in between so you ha you have the food and shelter and water that's yeah. your basic need and then above that you need to have a connection to people yeah connection yeah. that's you right you need Love to and be connection. accepted you need to have an attachment yeah. that's so important that yeah. from very very little that attachment yeah. to we belonging. built the community as and we have to I belong think that too, yeah. so yeah. then when you put in learning above that might come that artificial intelligence because you're using some incredible knowledge and skills and it's amazing but you need all those other things as yeah. well to get there and where does kindness fit into all that yeah, yeah exactly kindness is supposed <laughs> to be done we're trying to learn more about that to do it with kindness aren't we does a robot really know about that sensation well you see this is what i've got up to the so the argument would be some would say to some extent yes because a robot wouldn't know how to be unkind and I think the argument would be round the okay. other way, yeah, yeah. where we can silently be unkind in many, many different ways, and often knowingly, but sometimes not knowingly. A robot wouldn't know, arguably, someone might sit there, a program might, programmer might be sat there going, well, actually, I, I know how to do that. I don't know. But that's the, it's predictable. A robot is, predict is, is, is very predictable, whereas human beings, we're not. And, and the high level emotional intelligence is actually predictability. But in the classroom, you have to be really flexible. How do you better switch it off and on again? And I then round, round it back up, you know? And how do you know what very, very kind is, unless you've learned what not being kind yeah. is? Yeah. You, you need to know the not, the, the unkind, so yeah. that you can, but not just that simple kindness, but really kind, that yeah. very thought. Okay, we've literally got a minute left, so to ask you both, oh. uh, percentage of artificial intelligence with human learning, what, what percentage should it be? 80, 20, 70, 30? Well, I was immediately going to say 20. 80, 20? 20. 80, 20, yeah. And what would you say? Oh, I'm, I don't know, because I, how could a robot touch somebody's feet and pick up the sensation? How could they do that? So this is so I don't role. know. Do you know your role could be moving forwards is helping with the well-being and what have you. People cope with the stress and uncertainty yes. to the presence of artificial intelligence. Can I, yeah, yeah, can I just one leave more. you with one thought? Yeah, do. If you just massaged your fingers, both sides, backs and fronts, and the thumbs, 
you're actually stimulating the blood flow to your brain. You're giving yourself the chance to change your mindset. So if you're feeling really down and angry when you don't even know why, then just do that and a glass of water, Bob's your uncle, you'll be sorted. There you go. <laughs> I can't think of any better word. And just for me, I anticipate education, it will be at least 50-50, if not maybe going up higher than that, that artificial intelligence is going to have a higher presence. So all of us have a role to work with students, to work with teachers, yeah, um, and uh, and just mental health and well-being, I yeah. think, is the key thing. Ladies, have you enjoyed it? Thank it's you. Been good fun. <laughs> yeah, it's been good fun. Thank you so much for joining me. So that's Debbie Thank Stevens, you. and that is Amanda Harkey. Harkey. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care now, and uh, see you soon. But do Google them, by the way, on their websites as well.